All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. What we're going to be doing today is making some chicken jerky for our dogs. Um, we purchased this meat slicer about three and a half, almost four years ago, and it has been working flawlessly for us. And we use this thing probably every two to three months, roughly. Nonstop, the dogs are completely addicted to these jerkies, <laughs> and they want them all the time. So, of course, we have to spoil them. Anyways, let me show you how we make our uh, chicken jerky. You can use beef jerky, you know, whatever you want. And this is a much, much healthier way to treat, to, to give your dogs treats rather than buying that junk at the store that's not even real chicken or it's chicken with added whatever, who knows what, from China, okay? You don't want that garbage. And f some years ago, they had problems uh, with that chicken jerky, uh, dogs dying from it because there's some kind of toxins in it. Obviously, we don't want that, okay? We want real chicken. We bought here, uh, what do we got, 10 packets, honey? Mm -hmm. 10 packets of, uh, these are only eight. We got two more in the fridge of boneless chicken breasts. And we buy them at Sam's Club. You can go to Costco and get them too or any of those you know, big stores uh, where you can get bigger quantities of them. And they are the same price. These are at Sam's Club are at the, at the same price as Walmart, which you get uh, per pound, that is. Um, at Walmart has the smaller packets of boneless chicken breasts, and, and Sam's Club has the bigger packets, but the same price per pound. Uh, so we bought the bigger packets, and it should last them, you know, depending on how much we give them, two to three months um, worth of uh, chicken jerky. Um, I am going to put a link in the description under the video for the meat slicer here. Like I said, it's been working flawlessly for us. It is a 320 watt meat slicer. It's a motor with a belt driven, or, or it's belt driven. Uh, and when we bought this to give you an extra belt. We've, like I said, we use this thing regularly for almost four years now, and we've never had a problem with it. Um, it's 320 watts at maximum load, and at no load, it's like 65 watt. So, you know, depending what load you put on it, it works within that range. And then here we have a Samson de uh, dehydrator. It's, it's a 10 shelf, and we've had this thing also for maybe four years now or more, and it's been working great. Um, I'm going to put a link to this also in the description under the video. And if they don't have this exact one, I'll put something very similar, okay? Um, this will get you started in making jerky either for your pets or for yourself, okay? So uh, let's get started and let me show you how this all works. All right, guys, so I have some rubber gloves on. And on this hand also, on top of the gloves, I'm gonna put this cut-resistant glove on because you never know when you never know, right? You don't wanna cut yourself. And with this hand, I'll be touching the, the chicken breast mo uh, more or less. And with this hand, I'll just be working the slider. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention, that this has an eight and a half inch travel. Okay, in case you wanted to know. Alrighty, and it adjusts here for your thickness. And I always set it at... Uh, what was it? Number five, I think it was, which gives you about a quarter inch thickness on your uh, strips that you cut. Okay. Then all the meat that we cut goes into the bowl. Mm -hmm. 
And then with that little piece left over, it's pretty much thin enough and it's good enough. So once I get enough cut up, I'm going to have my wife, once I get a little more filled up in the bowl here, I'm going to have my wife uh, start putting these on the dehydrator trays and get them loaded while I'm cutting these. And um, I'm going to show you the, uh, how the uh, dehydrator works. And we've had, like I said, we've had that close to four years or more. And it's been working absolutely flawlessly for us. Um, and again, I'm going to put a link in the description to both this and that uh, dehydrator where you can uh, pick one up. So let me get a few more of these cut up and then I'll have my wife and start on these and start putting them on the tray on those dehydrator trays and uh, we'll get this thing going here and we'll show you the dry times and all that and what temperatures to set it at. So I also want to mention, as you're cutting, you're going to start getting all of these little pieces of chicken everywhere that you really can't make jerky out of. All those, shut this off, all these little pieces here, well this one we probably can, but all these, you know, these little scraps we'll call them, we save these. And what we do is we um, cook them up in a pan and put it in their dog food. Um, if uh, you don't know, we don't feed our dogs kibble dog food. That stuff is toxic poison. Dogs nowadays live, you know, you'd be lucky 9 to 10, 12 years. Um, dogs normally will live, big dogs too, will live... 18 to 20 years, no problem, if they're fed a real meat diet, mostly all meat. Um, that's, they're just carnivorous, okay? That's just the way they are. Um, we stopped feeding our dogs kibbles uh, years ago, about seven years ago maybe. They're, eight, they're about eight years old now. And it was a night and day difference. It's like somebody flipped a switch. And uh, all the aches and pain, they were, they were only a year old or so, and they had um, elbow hygroma, the swelled up uh, elbows, joint pains they were suffering from. And I'm like, what is going on here? And to come to find out, it's just their diet. We, ch we changed their diet. We were feeding them mostly chicken and beef. And we would throw in uh, some cooked beans as a filler, still a natural food. And... Just like that, they immediately started feeling great. My other dog's elbow hygroma shrank and she became normal. My dog became, my other dog became super playful. Well, he was kind of semi-aggressive all the time. He became so playful and uh, wanted to play all the time and he was running around and it was, it was just unbelievable. Diet is not only destroying us, but it's destroying our pets. 
All right, guys, so uh, we're going to finish up here, and we'll show you how the, uh, the uh, dehydrator works. I also wanted to mention uh, I kind of messed up on the gloves here. I was supposed to put my glove on first, then the rubber glove over this glove because now it's saturated with, um, you know, the chicken. So now we have to wash it for sure after we use this. <laughs> Otherwise, if you put the glove on first, then the rubber glove over it, um, it'll be fine. I also want to mention that if you find a lot of fat on some of the chicken breasts, which you'll always find that, even though they're trimmed really nice, don't worry about it. Cut it with the fat and after it's dehydrated, separate the really fatty ones and use those first because they're not going to store as long, obviously, because of the fat. Um, so don't worry about it. if there's fat on there. Just use those first for your dogs and they will absolutely love it. All right, so I am done slicing all the chicken breast. And some of these are still a little frozen. Let me see this here. When they're, you can't cut it frozen, of course. It'd be like cutting through a rock. But a little bit frozen, very, very cold to slightly frozen. It cuts through the really nice and your pieces come out, you know, looking like this, look really nice. Okay, so we are ready to clean it. Um, what I do is get a small screwdriver and carefully without scratching the paint and stuff, just kind of get all the meat that's stuck there at the bottom. And then this little pile right here, which you can't see, we got this pile right here is for the dogs. This other pile is for uh, the uh, um, dehydrator for their jerky. So the first thing we're going to do is take off the slider. Super easy. Right here, there's this little knob here. You just unscrew it. It comes right off, okay? Put that in your sink, ready to get washed. Next thing, there's this is the uh, stone sharpener here. I've sharpened this thing once and never had to sharpen it again, ever. And this blade is beyond sharp. I, I can't even begin to tell you how sharp it is. I forgot to tell you, before you start taking this thing apart, the uh, the thickness knob here for to, to control your thickness. Put that back at zero. That'll put this um, even or just above the blade. So even if you slid across it, you wouldn't cut yourself. Unplug it, of course. Make sure the machine's unplugged. Now to take this unit off here. What you're going to have to do is unscrew it from the back here. Let me show you. All right, so also to take the blade off, you're going to have to unscrew this here and push it. This plate right here will come off and then take the, uh, the screw out too. Now you're going to have three screws here. This takes the blade off. So it's a Phillips screwdriver. You just take those off. Do not lose the screws. Once you take the screws off, you can pinch it like a disc and then grab it from the middle and you got it off. Now be careful, this is super so this is, this is sharper than any knife you have, I'll guarantee you. Okay, so be careful and put this somewhere like in the sink face down where you can wash it with some, uh, some hot soapy water and a, and a rag and the other side also real good. Now the main unit itself here, like I said, just get your little screwdriver and all the meat that's all packed in there, we're going to collect that in this little pile here and then we're gonna cook that up for our dogs
And then the rest of it, get yourself a soapy dish uh, washcloth, nice soapy washcloth, and just start washing everything down. And uh, the stuff will come right off once the water gets to it and the soap. Clean it up real good. Uh, you, may have to, you may even have to get the rag, put it in between some of the stuff and you know, clean in between there really good. And um, yeah, so that's how we clean it. And the stuff in the sink, same thing, soapy hot water. Wash it all down, let it dry, and then you can put it all together. Uh, once we put this back together here, I'll have this back together in a second. I'll show you how to sharpen the blade if you need to sharpen the blade. All right, guys, so we are done with the last tray. So turn the machine on, and we have to set it for how many hours? 18 to 20? 20. 20 hours. Temperature at the highest setting, which is 167 for us. All right, so I've cleaned the meat slicer, and we're ready to, well, I'm ready to show you how to sharpen the blade if you need to. Like I said, we've had this thing now three, four years, and I've never, I only sharpened it once. I did a video on this about three, four years ago, and haven't sharpened it since. But every once in a while, it's okay just to give it a little touch up. All right, so the piece that goes on top here, it'll go on this way or it'll go on 180, this way, okay? Now here you got two grinding wheels over here. The one on the angle, which is this one here, you can see I'm moving it up and down. That one is for the angle, of course, on the blade. And the other one is for the face, the flat face. So what we want to do is put it on to where the angle, the stone that's on an angle is where the angle, the back of the uh, blade is. And the one that's f straight on the face, okay, so just like that. You'll see this button here is straight out rather than an angle, okay? So this one's straight, and this button here is on an angle, okay? And you want to come back here and tighten up this knob here. Just like that. Just give it a, just snug it up. Now this is for the face of the blade. And this one that's on an angle here is for the back part of the blade. All right, now we turn the machine on. And what we want to do, this is the one that actually sharpens the blade. This is just to take the burr off that uh, is caused by this one on the blade. So what we want to do is hold it for a few seconds and then back off. And then this one we just want to hold it for just a second or two. You don't have to push too hard, just a little bit on this one. This just takes the burr off. And that's all there is to it. All right, so what I do is after sharpening it, you're gonna have a little bit of the dust from the wheel and a little bit of metal powder from the stainless steel blade. Take this off. Now remember, this is super sharp. You gotta be real careful. You turn the machine on, get a washcloth, damp washcloth, of course, fold it up a few times. Get your fingers away from the blade and just kind of wipe the blade with it like this. And the very back part, get your fingers away from the blade and just, just rub it a little bit and that's done. Okay, and then shut it off. And you can put this back on. Now, one thing I want to mention, this, to sharpen it goes on this way. But when you're grinding, you, when you're grinding, when you're cutting your, the meat, you can flip this 180. That keeps the stones away from the wheel and they won't get all uh, filled with meat pieces and stuff like that. Okay? And uh, that is all to that. Another thing I want to mention so nobody cuts themselves is when this is uh, not in use, 
or you're sharpening the blade or whatever you're getting ready to always make sure that the thickness selector here is at zero when you have it at zero this back backing here and the blade are either flush or the backing is a little above it so if you were to run your hands across there you won't cut yourself okay and you have this cover on here there's no way nowhere to where you can actually cut yourself on here so I just wanted you to know that all right guys it's the next day the dehydrator is done sorry for the noise we got our uh, cube freeze dryer going right now we got our fresh orchard or orchard fresh peaches and plums in there uh, we got a ton of them to do if you want to watch our video of us picking those cutting them cleaning them and freeze drying them and how they come out um, I'm gonna put a link to that right up here so you can check that out all right so these are done let me show you how they came out that looks pretty all right guys so let me get the rest of these out I'll put them on the table here and we'll give them a taste test uh, well, the dogs will give them a taste, taste test. All right, Tobe, come here. Come on, Tobe. All right. Are you, are you guys, you want a treat? Huh? You want a treat? You guys want a treat? All right, come here. Whoa, can you guys lay down for me? <laughs> All right, okay, sit, sit nice, sit, sit. <laughs> That's too funny. They're like, we'll just try anything. Just give us the jerky. <laughs> yeah, I think they liked them. Let's try this one more time. Only... I'm going to try and get a fatty one. Let's see if we can get another one out here. Well, here's a ginormous one right here. I didn't even say anything yet. No, I didn't say nothing. Come here. <laughs> sit up. Sit. No, no lay down. Sit. No, Mia, sit. Mia, come on, get up. Sit. Oh, good girl. Toby, sit. Oh, good boy. All right, as you can see, the dogs love these treats. And yes, we spent a lot of money on all those um, uh, packages of chicken breasts. But you do know how much those chicken breasts cost at the uh, pet shop. A little bag like this is, I don't know, 35, 40 bucks. It's ridiculous. You can make your uh, pet treats, your, uh, you can make your treats for your dogs. Um, the amount we bought would last us two to three months. Now, to store these, what we do is we get these and we put them in a paper bag. Not plastic. Do not put them in a plastic bag. Put them in a paper bag and close it up and keep them in a cool, dry place. And uh, we've had them last over three months and they're just fine. They don't, there's no mold. There's no nothing. You got to remember, the temperature on that thing is over 160 degrees. They're basically cooked, and it dries them out. They're cooked, and uh, really got nothing to worry about. I would try one of these, but these, they're, they're kind of hard and snappy, and I don't want to mess up my dental work. <laughs> so uh, great for your pets, natural chicken breast for them. They love it. They go crazy for it. In fact, they love them so much that every time they go out to do their thing, 
They come back in, they'll sit right in front of the little, we have a little box on the counter where we keep these all, and they'll sit there and wait for us to give them a treat. So, so anyways guys, uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you learned how to make jerky. Again, I'm gonna put a link in the description for the meat slicer and that uh, dehydrator in the description under the video. It is an affiliate link, and if you use that link to buy one, it helps us out a tiny bit and we would greatly appreciate it and it costs you nothing. All right guys, so thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in my next video. Toby, sit, sit.